Now for today, there's going to be a ping pong version game that we are going to do. And there's also going to be a um, rainbow effect that you're going to be able to draw. And it's going to be able to create your own um, image. And it's going to be able to duplicate itself. And it's going to make a rainbow um, screen up here. So that one's pretty cool. There is going to be a lot of drawing today. So I am preparing you guys now. Um, I'm going to show you some tricks of how to make the drawing a little bit easier so you don't get frustrated because I know when I first learned how to do this, it does get a little frustrating. Okay, so I'm going to teach you an easier way how to do it. If you are using a, um, a PC, this one is going to be a lot easier for you versus if you are using a laptop you are going to need a very steady hand, or if you use a mouse, it would work the best. Also, it's gonna go over a little bit more of using our variables, things that we use. We're just gonna be taking a little look at that as well, because last, um, the first day that we started, we kind of talked a little bit about each of the parts of our coding section, but we didn't really focus too much on those. So today we're going to focus a little bit on that as well. Also at this time, I do want to give a shout out to Claris Way for allowing us to learn Scratch for free as well as next week. So thank you Claris Way for allowing us to learn Scratch. Also at this time, please make sure that you are logged into your account to save some time, okay? So we can get started right now, okay? Also, if you are having difficulty saving, you do need to remember to rename it to something so you're able to go back later on and know exactly what project you are saving it under, okay? Because I know there was a couple of students from the last class that was having some issues with the saving portion. So we do wanna make sure that you are saving it to something that you are going to be able to remember and that you're able to get that saved correctly. All right, so for today, I'm just gonna get us started. We're gonna talk a little bit about our operators first, okay? All right, guys, so let me continue. Oop, we wanna go back a minute. All right, so now for our operators, we kind of used our little operators section. Now, some of these pieces we are going to use a lot. This pick random button is a very popular one that we do use. We also use our greater, less than, and equal to numbers as well. Now, these buttons on the bottom, we rarely use, okay? They are used in Scratch, but I rarely use these. So these are some buttons that you can kind of test around to see how how those buttons actually work, all right? And also we know that these colors are in light green. All right, now for the variables, we did use these variables yesterday. Now we did use that set variable, okay? We also did do that change. Now that show and hide variable as well, those are buttons that we do use. We rarely use them now, but next week we will be focusing more on that show and hide option as well when the projects are going to get a little bit more complex. So today's game is a going to be a pretty cool one. We are gonna be making a Pong ping pong version game where we are going to be using an import of using a ball and also a paddle as well as a backdrop and also drawing some of these lines okay and i'm going to teach you a special easy way how to draw that line so you don't get frustrated on there i'm just going to give me a second let me just go back to our powerpoint all right so i am going to hit my create account okay so we can start by making our new project now another student was asking do we need the cat for this project no we do not need the cat for this project so you can delete that cat we do not need that now there's going to be one thing that we're going to do first i'm going to do the easy part first and then we can do that hard part after okay so the first part we're going to do is we're going to choose a sprint and we're just gonna select the ball, okay? Now I'm gonna show you a pretty cool thing that we can do. Once you have the ball, you're gonna notice that it is an orangey yellow color. Now I know that I don't like that actual color, but there is actually a way to change the color of it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go to your costumes, 
up on the top, and you're going to be able to select a different color of your choice. Now, I'm going to pick the bowl C, which is the pink color. If you want to use that one, you can, or you can use any of the following ones. So now that you guys have that ball option that you were able to change it as well, we're gonna be also adding another piece. Now there's two ways of you guys being able to do this. You can select one that is there or you can also draw yours. I wouldn't use the drawing option. I would use the paddle that they did provide. But if you want to make your colors match to one another, you can use that drawing option. But I'm just going to use a paddle option on this. I'm going to see if I'm able to write the word paddle. Yes. And it is going to be able to give me that paddle option. Okay. So we do have that paddle and we do have that ball. All right, guys. So now that we have the paddle and we do have the ball, we are going to get go to the next part. Now, this part is going to be a little bit tricky, okay? A little bit tricky. We are going to be importing a backdrop, okay? So that means that we are going to use one that they have selected for us, okay? Now, they use the one that I believe it says wall number one, okay? We want to make sure that you are using this one to make our line a lot easier for us to do. Now, later on, if you decide that you wanna use a different backdrop option, you are going to be able to use another backdrop option once you get the code, but you do wanna make sure that you are drawing that line when you do your other backdrop, okay? Because that line is important. It's just this one is a lot easier for you to see because that line option is available on the bottom for us to know how far our line needs to go go. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you are doing this, we are going to be using the color red, okay, once we do that. So now once we're in our backdrop option, okay, you're going to make sure that you're clicked onto your backdrop once you have it selected. Then you're going to hit the backdrop option up at the top by your coding section, okay. We are going to delete that first backdrop of being empty, okay. We don't need that. And then what we're going to do is we are going to actually be using the paintbrush option to be able to draw that red line on the bottom. Now I'm going to show you exactly what it's going to look like before we actually get started. Okay. See on the bottom, this red line, this is going to be that line where we are going to draw it. Now I have previously done this where I drew the line all the way up to that gray shade. You can do it that way, or it's a lot easier if you keep it towards the bottom, okay? You're keeping it towards the bottom. All right, so what we're gonna do from here, I'm gonna go back to our area, okay? I have here, and I also have my ball, and I also have the paddle, but remember, you've got to make sure you are clicked in your backdrop, not your options that you are with your ball or your paddle, okay? So we are in our backdrop option. Now, you are going to make sure when we're clicking here, we're clicking a color, okay? And we want to make sure that it is the color red. So you want to go towards the pink area. You want to find red. Now, this is important to remember. Okay, here we go. I got my red shade. Perfect. Now, you do want to make sure that you are keeping that color in mind because later on when you are going to be using our coding section, we do want to make sure that color matches completely. So now that we have that color selected, you're going to be able to use the paintbrush option or you're going to be able to use an easier option of this line option. The line option is a lot easier. You're going to get more of a straighter line versus the brush option is going to be a little bit more shaky, okay? So I'm going to use that line option, but if you want to have a steady hand and use that paintbrush option, you're more than welcome to do that as well. Now, you can make your line a lot thicker because right now it's at 10%. We do want to make that line a lot thicker. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Yes, you guys can use that square option as well. That was another easier one to do. Okay. Now you can use that square option or you can use that line. Right now, 23 is still a little thin for me. So I'm going to make it a little bit thicker. 
All right, so I'm gonna use it at 40 to make my line. Now you're gonna do it towards the bottom, guys. You're gonna take that and you're gonna run that across towards the bottom, okay? And that line is going to be perfect. Perfect, perfect, okay. Now that I have that line being dragged towards the bottom, okay, if you have chosen another color as well, that is fine. Can we use an octagon? Um, as long as it does, it makes that line purse, you can use that. I never use that option of just make sure your line is just towards the bottom. If it makes that octagon not appear too much, that is fine as well. Now that we have that line, we are going to be able to, we are going to be able to get that information. Just give me one second. We're just going to go back to that PowerPoint in a second. All right. We have that PowerPoint. This right here is just showing you everything that we just did. We did import that backdrop, okay, that background. We also did include that bowl, and we also did include a paddle, okay? And like I said just before, we are making that line go towards the bottom. Now, they did do it towards the middle and not completely towards the bottom. That is also another thing that you could do it that way, or you can go towards the bottom. It doesn't matter which way on that. All right, now you did use a ball in there and we did use that paddle. So now we're gonna be able to start with our coding section. Just give me a second, I just wanna find my notes. All right, so this is gonna be the first one that we're gonna be focusing on the ball. Now for the ball, it is going to have two parts and our paddle is only gonna have one part. So I'm gonna actually start with our paddle first, only because that one is extremely, extremely short. And then if you are trying to catch up with the, what we just did, we can go back to that bowl to make everything a lot easier for you to be able to follow along. So we are gonna do our paddle first. So I'm gonna click on my paddle and I am gonna go to my coding section, okay? So I am doing the paddle first. Now for the paddle, it's pretty simple. We are gonna go to our events area and you're gonna select that when flag clicked. Just gonna make it bigger so you guys are able to see that. So once we have that, you're gonna be also going to our control section and you're gonna use the one that says forever. Now what, what sprite did we use? You guys are using the ball sprit and you're also using the paddle, okay? You're using the ball and the paddle. You do not need the cap for this one. Okay, sure, no problem. All right, now that you guys have that, pretty simple, just double checking to make sure everybody has what, if you weren't in, in the beginning of the class, we did use a backdrop, we did use that paintbrush option or that line or that square, or even that octagon that somebody suggested. We did do a bowl, and we also did a paddle. And we are working right now on our paddle. There is only one more code for this. That's why we worked with the paddle first. And the last one we need for that is going to be that motion, and it's going to be that go to random position. Just click that down option, and you're gonna use mouse pointer. So what that paddle is going to do is, it's going to be using your mouse pointer to be able to glide across one another. So I'm gonna test mine out just to make sure. And yes, mine is working properly, just like the code was using. It's able to use that mouse pointer to glide it around wherever I want it to go. Somebody says, I don't have motion. You might not have motion if you are in your backdrop option area, you are not going to have it. So please, please, please make sure that you are clicked onto your paddle that is highlighted in blue, okay? Can you change your backdrop? Chromebook, you can change your backdrop, but it's basically, if you are gonna be following along the way that I did it, 
it's best to use the one that we did. And then later on, since you're going to be able to know the coding on portion on that, you can adjust it later on. Okay. The one that they're using in the PowerPoint is the one that I'm showing you. Okay. How did I do get the bricks? I will show you how to do that one more time. Just give me one second. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to go towards the bottom where it is going to be that backdrop option. You're going to click that square option. Okay. I write by the search for bar over here, I write the word brick, or you can say wall, okay? And you're gonna be able to select that wall number one, okay? And you're gonna be able to add that in there. I'm just gonna go back to my backdrop option just to see, okay? Once you click on your backdrop option, you're gonna be able to go to your backdrop, and then you're going to be able to use that paintbrush option to draw that red line, because that red line is not going to be in your game when you are doing that. Now, I do notice that if you are not seeing Maya, I saw that you were having that difficulty with the motion. If you are in your backdrop option, just like how I was, you are not gonna have motions to go along with that. So you do need to make sure you are in your paddle area, okay? How do we go on this website you are using? Okay, so let me give you that website. The website that we are using right now is Scratch, dot mit.edu. Now you do need to make your own account if you want to save your projects. You could do it by just creating um, a project, but you're not going to be able to do it. Yes, Chromebook. Chromebook, I see you have a question. Just ask me in the chat so I can go to the next step, but please, yeah, you can ask me there. Baron, yes. Baron, do you have a question or you're okay? For some reason, my paddle is going sideways. It's going sideways. Now, is it going with your mouse pointer or is it just side? It's the direction is sideways. The direction is sideways and it's following my mouse pointer. Okay. So what probably happened to you is if you, um, did you click any, do you know if you clicked anything? Because there is a direction here. If you accidentally hit the direction, you see how right now on my screen, I'm able to move the direction that it's going. You're just going to have to adjust it to go um, even, you know, sideways. So you're able to have it just looking that way. If you change that direction, you're going to be able to make it go perfectly. Thanks. You're very welcome. All right. So guys, um, that code was pretty simple on there. There was only three things to do for that one. The next one is going to be more on the ball, okay? So your paddle was nice and easy. That's going to be able to control the, um, for you to be able to make that ball touch that paddle, okay? Now, if the direction, guys, if you did have the issue, just like the previous student, and the direction is going to be on its side, or if it's upside down or anything to that related, you can use that direction option where you can move it to the way that you want it to be, okay? So I'm going to actually go on to my um, ball for the next one. Somebody said my sprite is upside down. If your sprite is upside down, now are you talking about your paddle? If you're talking about the paddle, you do want to make you do want to make sure that you are changing that direction if you do not want it to be upside down. All right. So we're going to do the ball now. Now the ball does have a lot of sections for this. The first one is going to be a small one and then the other one is going to be a larger one. Okay, somebody says they don't understand. What you're going to do, okay, I'm going to show you right now so you're going to be able to understand. Okay, so now if my paddle for, my paddle is the green paddle, okay, if the direction, you see there is a button, once you're looking from the paddle, you're going to see a button that says direction. You're going to be able to move that arrow around. See right now, if it is like this, just say it's looking like this, that it's looking up and down for me. That's not the way that I want my game to look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that arrow and be able to move it around to look that it's sideways that I'm able to control it that way. So I'm just moving that circle around to make it the direction that I want. Somebody says, my sprite is moving across the screen. It should be, guys, it should be moving around the screen. Once you click that little arrow, you see how mine is moving around? That is exactly what it's supposed to be doing, okay? It's supposed to be using your mouse pointer to move it around, but it's not moving my mouse. 
it's just moving by itself. I'm not quite sure why it's just moving by itself. If you put that code in there to mouse pointer, now my question to you, Lath, is are you using um, a mouse or are you using a laptop? Because that can also be another thing as well, a mouse. Now it should be working properly. Now, are you sure that you did not do it in your backdrop option? Making sure that you're using a keyboard. Okay, so if you're using, okay, all right. So what you need to make sure that you're doing, it stopped. Okay, somebody said it stopped, good. So what you guys need to make sure, if you are using a mouse, you do wanna make sure that it's not in your backdrop because if it is in your backdrop option, it's not gonna have control. You do wanna make sure that it's in your sprit section, okay, your sprite. So I am gonna use our ball now so we can get started with that ball, okay? Your paddle should be able to work properly, guys. That steps are very, very simple on there. If you are doing it in the wrong section, that could be an issue, okay? So do make sure that it's in its own sprite section. And you do not wanna make it also in the ball because I had had students place a paddle and a ball into one area. You wanna make sure each of those are done separately. All right, so for the first one for our ball, it is going to be in our event section, okay? And we are gonna use that when clicked option. We're gonna use that when clicked option. I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna bring it over. Somebody said my sprite won't move. Now, are you talking about your paddle is not a being able to move? Because if your paddle, guys, remember, don't do it in that backdrop. If it's not able to move, you're most likely put it in your backdrop option. You do want to make sure it's in your paddle option where you're going to be able to be able to make that move, okay? Once you guys have that, you are going to go to the motion section. And we're going to select the go to X and Y. Now, your X is going to be a 20. And your Y is going to be a 160. You're going to take those and connect those two. How do I check my backdrop? If it's in your backdrop, the option all the way towards the bottom is going to be your backdrop option. If you are clicked and seeing the image of what you're seeing, these codes of what you're looking at, that means that you did do it in your backdrop option. If you are not seeing any motion um, blocks or anything like that, you are definitely in the wrong one. Oh, I found you. Okay, I'm gonna put your mic on so I, my mic don't, oh, your mic doesn't work. Okay, so if your mic doesn't work, just ask me the question in the chat so I'm able to see it that way so we can continue and then I can answer your question, okay? All right, so once we have that go to X um, and Y, we're also gonna be in our motion where it's gonna be point and direction, okay? So we are gonna be back in that motion section and it's gonna be point and direction. Omer, I'm not sure you said you're new and I can't do it. Oh, you can't, okay. So this project is a little bit more difficult on here. Just make sure you are, are you able, were you able to at least get the backdrop and also the spritz or you were not able to do any of that? Uh-oh, all right. So we're gonna do that point and direction. And this is going to be the number 45. Now you can move that around, okay? You can move that one around, but you're not gonna be able to um, use that arrow if you will do not see that. A lot easier if you just write that. I couldn't do any of that, okay. Omer, definitely tomorrow. Have you been in any of the other classes? Okay, so if you haven't been in any of the other classes, the projects are going to get a little bit more trickier. Tomorrow, just make sure you're coming a little bit earlier so I can try to see if I'm able to help you, okay? So you're able to do a little bit more of the project because this one is a little bit more trickier for you to do. Okay, so once we have that point in direction, you also are going to be able to go to our control and we're going to take that button that says forever. Okay, so once we have that forever, we are going to go back to that motion, okay? And we are going to use the one that says, if on edge bounce, 
And we're also going to use that move button. Okay, it's going to say move 10 steps, but we are going to change that to say 15. Okay, good. I'm glad your ball started to move again. Perfect. All right. So this one pretty easy on that one. We did use a lot of motions. We did use our control option and we did use our events. Now we're going to go for the big one. This is where it's going to get a little bit more difficult for us to do. Okay. So for this, I'm just going to move this to the side. Okay. Now I did test mine out by clicking mine. Now my ball is able to move around. Okay. My ball is able to move around. Now my paddle is not working. Okay. But it's don't worry about that just yet. Okay. Don't worry about that. Just make sure your ball is moving around freely. Okay. So we're going to first go to our events for this one. We are going to use a when clicked. Once we have that, we are going to go to our variables and you are going to select the one that says set scores to zero. But in order for us to have that word scores, we are going to have to make a variable. Okay. So make a variable. And we're just going to write the word score. Okay. Now I do notice that my scoreboard is in my um, game, which it's supposed to be. If yours is not showing on there, that means that little arrow that is to be checked is not checked, so it's not able to be seen in your game. So you do need to make sure that arrow check in your variable section is clicked as well to, in order for you to see it. All right, once we have that, now guys, this one is going to be a lot, a lot of steps. Okay, this one's gonna have a lot, a lot of steps. For the next one, we are going to go into our control. We are going to select the forever, but we, we did not even select the last one. So let me go back to our variables. We have that word variables, but we are going to add that set my variable. Just change that to say score. And then we're going to have that say zero. We do want to make sure that's in there as well. Okay. Now that we have that set scores and we also do have that forever button, we are also going to include another control button, okay? The control button is going to be that if then. If then. Uh-oh. Thank you for seeing that. Yes, you are right. I don't know why I have that in there. Just going to move it. Give me a second, guys, because something was not. All right. I'm not sure why mine was in there. Just give me one. Okay, so now the paddle, just make sure guys, don't do the mistake that I just did. You do wanna make sure that you are in your bowl. Okay, so I'm just gonna put those in here. It's gonna be that when clicked, I'm just gonna fix what I just did. Have my forever. Okay, now the last one I was just saying is for that if then, do not select the one that says if then else, we just need that plain if then. Once we have that, we are gonna to go to our sensing. It's going to be that touching. Now we're gonna be selecting the one that says paddle. Now, if you guys drew your paddle and you didn't select the one that is there, you do need to make sure that you rename your paddle to be named as paddle in order for that to say that in there. Otherwise, it's just gonna say sprint one or drawing one or whatever it is located on there. That is going to be an issue where you can get tricked on there. So do you make sure that you change that word to paddle if you drew your own. So once we have that touching paddle, 
we are going to go back to our variables. You are going to use the one that says change my variable by one. We are going to select that down option and it's going to say score. All right. So now that we have that touching um, scores, we are going to go to our sound section for this. You are going to be using the sound water drop. Now, right now it says play sound pop. So what you're going to do is you're going to click that top sound. Once you are in the sound section, you're going to delete that sound boing, and you're also going to delete that sound pop. Once you delete those two, you're going to click the bottom and we're going to find the one that is water drop okay so it's going to make like a dropping sound of water that is the one that we're going to be using for this once we have that we are going to click back onto your coding section oops yb um one second yb yes mm -hmm. yb yes go ahead when i hit score it changes it by four it's changing by four. No, it should. Now, did you do change score by one or does yours say change score by four? I did by one. By one and it's doing by four. Yes. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Just, you know what you might have to do? Take that code out, re-put that code back in and then try to see if it's able to work that way. Okay. Okay. Somebody says you cannot delete the boing or pop in the sound category. Where you should be, guys, you should be able to get that option. Once you click that sound and then you're hitting that sound up at the top, you should be able to get that little garbage can and click it and be able to delete those. If you are working maybe onto a iPad, that might be one of the reasons why you're not able to delete it, but you should be able to delete it by clicking that little garbage can to get rid of it. Okay, once we have that sound saying play sound water drop, we are gonna use the one that says, you can use, it's saying play sound water drop until done. You can use that one or you can use that start sound. I'm gonna use that play sound until done option. Once we have that, you are gonna go to your motion it should, guys, it should, by you going to that sounds and then going to that sounds at the top, you should be able to get that option to be able to delete it. If it's not letting you delete it, just select one of the sounds that it is going to allow you to do it. You might be able to just use that popping sound or that boing sound. Oh, you got it. Okay, so you're fine. All right. So now that we have that place down, we are gonna go to our motion. You are gonna select that turn down, okay? Turn down, but don't place it in there just yet because we are also going to use a operators for this. So we're gonna click to go to our operators. And we're gonna use the one that is pick random. Pick random. Now your first pick random is going to be 160. And your second one is going to be 200. All right, guys. So let me continue. Um, YB, I see you have your hands up. Just give me one second. Let me just do the next one and then I will answer your question. Oh, I think you might have asked me. You said you're not giving any points. Is that the question that you were asking? All right, so once we have that, we are still gonna be in our motion section and you're gonna select the one that says move 10 steps. We are gonna be able to change that to say 15. I'm gonna take that and you're gonna place that underneath. Wait until the end where we get all the um, codes in there and then we're gonna see if we're able to check. I'm gonna see if we're able to um, adjust that because you should be able to get it to move as long as you did it in your ball your ball section you should be able to do it so i will double a check at, towards the end let me know if anything changes okay because otherwise i might have to check to see if um you did something wrong all right so once we have that move you are going to go back to our control 
and we're going to select that weight button and we're going to change that to say 0 0.5. And you're going to place that underneath your move. All right, so once we have that, you are going to go back to our control section. We are already there. You're going to use that if then button. Now for this button placement, you are not going to use it underneath that weight. You're going to do it in that little barrel after. You're going to see a line in front of it. That's the way that you know that you put it in the right spot. Somebody says there is no scoreboard. Not you. Um, what you're going to have to make sure when you are doing that, you need to make sure in your variables section, okay, if you are clicking in your variables, if you are not seeing that scoreboard, you knew, do need to make sure that check mark is shown for that. Otherwise, it is hidden. If that mark is not clicked, you are not going to be able to see that in your game, okay? So you do need to make sure that's clicked on there. All right. So guys, this is gonna be the part where it's gonna get a little bit tricky. Now, if you guys did not use the color red, this is going to be whatever color that you guys use for that drawing, because I know some said, what happens if I use a different color? So this is gonna be the part where you're just gonna add that information with that. If you also um, use a different color, I'm gonna show you an easier way to try to match the color directly, okay? So for this, you're gonna go to our touching um, button, which is gonna be in our sensing. Now it's gonna be a touching color button. Now I'm gonna place that on the side, okay? You're gonna see a question mark and you're gonna see the color green. Now we know that we did not use that color green. So what you're gonna do is you're actually going to get that color red. Now there is a way, all right. So I am going to change this to the color red. Now that red totally does not match. There we go. So mine matches now perfectly on there. Now there is a way, let me see if I remember how to do it. Yes, okay. On the bottom of your color section, to make sure that it's matching it directly and correctly, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit this little button, okay? And it's going to allow you to scan around your screen and find the color match of your one that you need. Now I do need that red button to work, so I'm gonna hit that red area and it's actually gonna match that color perfectly for that touching color. Last, it says, do we need this if we already have red? You do need that option to match perfectly, so you do want to make sure that it is matching, okay? It is matching that color red. That button is a lot easier if you're able to check it and do that, okay? So once we have that, we only have one more button for it to be complete. Now for the last button, it's going to be a stop all, which is going to be in our control and we're gonna use that stop all and you're gonna place that in that area. All right, so that included that, that includes all the codes that we needed for that. Now I know some of you guys were having some difficulties. Double check now to make sure that it is working correctly. I'm gonna test mine out now, okay? But guys, you gotta remember, when it is touching that red color towards the bottom, your game is going to stop. Okay, so right now I only got one point because my ball did touch that red. So you do want to make sure that your paddle is at full control of blocking your ball to be able to touch that red on the bottom. So you do want to make sure that is nice and precise. Unless you are using a different color, whatever color is towards the bottom, it's going to be able to do that. All yeah, it says, it won't let me play the game. Now it should let you play the game once you hit that little flag option, you should be able to get that game started. Okay, you got it, perfect. All right, so let me double check to make sure it looks like okay, where it looks like everybody's okay on there, super. Now this one is a cool game, I do enjoy this one. YB, one second. My, yes, ball, YB. my ball still doesn't bounce your ball is not bouncing. Now, what does it do? It is it just falling from the top of the screen down? It's giving me points when I when it touches the paddle, but it doesn't. Yeah. It just falls. Okay, so it's just falling down. 
Now, double check to make sure the codes are correct. What I like to do sometimes too, if I mess up and it is not working on that, you might have to just do another um, code, repeat by following the same code and make it on the bottom, then replace that first one, get rid of it and use that second one and see if it's able to change. Sometimes if it doesn't adjust correctly, it might um, run into that issue. Try it, make it one more time, and then see. Okay. Okay. That way, try it. You know, don't get rid of that code until everything matches directly. Because if you're not able to do it, you're saying the bouncing part is not working. So that's the part that you would have to repeat that step, and not the second part. If you're able to change your score and do that, then you sh that's not the issue. The first part is. Okay. Okay. All right. Boostra, do you have something to say? I love your message. Thank you for teaching yeah. it. I like teaching it. On panel. Um, I got one thing to tell you guys. Do you know in uh, Ghost Trouble? Uh huh. You could cheat like by making your ghost go away. I tried to do that with the ball, but the ball. But it didn't do that. It, you it doesn't do it. You know what? This one is a little bit more complex because of that touching color. It's pretty much impossible to cheat for this version. The it's only other way is if you didn't have that button in there. If we didn't include that in our game at all, then we wouldn't have, you know what I mean? You would take that part out. If you took out if touching color and then just left it as stop all, you would be able to be, you know, you wouldn't have to worry about, you would get your score a lot higher. Um, and I forgot. Okay, perfect. Do you have it or no, you're okay? My brother wanted to say something. Sure, go ahead. It's very fun, thank you. You're very welcome, I'm glad you liked it. So for this one guys, also um, do make sure that you are saving that so we are able to go to our next game. I'm gonna show you iPad one second. iPad, yes. Um, yeah, when, when I um, hit the ball with my paddle, first of all, it goes right through the paddle and second, when I hit it, it just like, sometimes it rebounds, but then it just bounces off of thin air. Really? And now is it able to give you um, points or nothing? Oh, it gives me points. But like I when I hit it, sometimes it just goes right yeah, through it. And sometimes it, when it touches the red, nothing happens. It just bounces back up and then it rebounds in midair. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So something is a little off on it. Like I said, it's not going to be perfect. You might be able to stop the game for a period of time and then redo it again and see if it's able to adjust. Okay. I'll try that. Okay. See if it does. Otherwise it's going to be a little bit off. Okay. Okay. So guys, what I'm going to do at this time is I am going to use my file save now. I'm going to be calling mine Ping Pong. Now they also called it Pong Starter. If you want to name either one or whatever you want to save it as, that is fine. I'm just going to hit that file save now once I have it. And then we are going to start our second project. Once you did save it, guys, you are going to hit that file new. So for this one as well, guys, we are going to be doing drawing for this. The game is going to be called, just give me one second. It's going to be a color splash. Okay. So this is the one that we're going to be doing. Now we are going to be drawing this sort of image. Okay. Now you are going to be able to draw this whatever way that you want. This is the version that they are going to be making. So mine is going to look very similar to this one. So this is going to be the one that we're going to use. So the first thing you do need to get rid of is that cat. We do not need it. All right. So once we do that, I am going to hit that little paintbrush option for my sprite. Okay. I'm going to hit that area and I'm going to be able to draw it the way that I want it to look right now. Just going to adjust everything for one second. All right. Perfect. Now for this, guys, I am going to use that circle option. Now they are using the color red for this one. 
basically for this, let me just double check. Let me check the codes for a second to make sure. For this one, I believe you can use whatever color that you want as a starter. Yes, because there is no color option on here, you will be able to use the color of your choice. So I'm going to use the color pink for mine. Okay, and I'm going to also use that circle option. Now what I'm going to do first is I'm going to use that circle option and make thy circle. Now I don't want to make it big. I want to make mine small. So I'm going to just do it maybe about this size. Yes, I think that's a perfect size for me. And then I'm also going to use that line option and I'm gonna draw those lines out. Now guys, as you can see, the lines are going to be black. We don't want our lines to be black. We want to make those lines um, be the same as before. Now I do wanna see if I'm able to use that paintbrush option. Yes, that one's gonna be a lot easier to use. So I'm gonna use that paintbrush option so it matches, and I'm gonna be drawing those lines swiggly out, okay, kind of like a sun, and be able to draw that line out. This one is a lot easier to use than that option of drawing those lines, okay? This one is a lot easier to do. I'm gonna just draw those lines. Now you can add more lines if you want. You can add less lines if you want, whatever way that you want yours to be. I kind of mind make mine to like a spider, okay? And do my lines like that. That is going to be my design that I chose to make it look like. Now you can do the one towards of what they did. They did their lines a little bit straighter. I did mine a little bit curvy out. It is up to you to whatever the design that you want yours to be. Okay. Because later on it's going to be um, duplicating itself, but you're going to be able to do it any way that you want. Now, also, guys, for this. They do have theirs named as Sprite number one or Sprite number one. You do not need to change anything of that, okay? So this one says you're gonna draw a Sprite and import a Sprite of your choice, okay? You can either import something or you can either draw it. The drawing one is a lot easier. I want you guys to be more familiar of how to draw certain things when you are using this program. So it is a lot easier if you are drawing for this one. So I'm gonna show you the other design just so you guys are able to see. And then we're gonna be able to, once you have that, we're gonna be able to include the codes for this. And now there's gonna be two long parts for this, okay? Two long parts. All right, so once we have that, we are gonna be going to that coding section, okay? Make sure this is not in your backdrop, guys. This is in your spirit section, okay? Not there. You can include a backdrop if you choose to. I'm gonna use a backdrop. There is no code for this. I just wanted to be able to see um, the area a lot better. So I'm gonna just use the star background, which is a black background, okay? So I'm able to see it a little bit better with the, without you know looking at just a white screen on there. So I just did that one. So you're able to see that rainbow effect happen better. You wanna do something that is a little bit dark, okay? This background is gonna work perfectly for this project. All right. So now that everybody should by now have their drawing of the one that they want. So once you guys have that design and also a backdrop, we're gonna be able to start. I'm gonna do the first part and then we'll do the continuation part. All right, so for the first one, it is going to be in our events and it's going to be that when clicked. Now guys, as you guys can see, we use that when click a lot, okay? When we are doing that project. So once we have that, now we did this yesterday, this part for the next part. We're gonna go towards the bottom where it has that added extension, okay? And we're gonna select the one that is pen. So once we have that, you are gonna select the one that says erase all, okay? Now my code is gonna say clear. You're not gonna have that option available to you on there, but that erase all button is going to also work for our case, okay? So it is going to be able to work for this one. All right, so once we have that erase all, we are going to go into our control option and you're gonna use that forever button. So once we have that forever button, we are gonna go to our motion 
you are going to select to the button that says go to random position. Just click that down option and use that mouse pointer. So we're, again, we are going to be using our mouse pointer to help that rainbow effect happen. Now, once we have that, we are going to go to our control section. And we're going to find the button that is if then. We're going to go to our control and we're going to use that if then option. Now for that if then, it's going to be touching that go to mouse pointer. All right. So once we have it, we are going to place a button in there as well. But we can also save some time by going to the next step. We are going to use the button that says create clone of myself, which is in that control option, where you're going to take that in, fill it in that space available. That way we do that step already and then we can go right to the next step. For the next one, it is going to be mouse down. Now mouse down, I believe, let's see if it's in our motions. If you're not able to go to motions, guys, that means that you did do it in your backdrop, which you don't want that option to happen. Thank you. Yes, it is in sensing the good eyes, guys. My eyes for a minute were not with me. It is in sensing. Thank you for saying that. So you're going to take that mouse down and we're going to place that inside that area. All right. So we have that mouse down. Super. Now, once we have that, we are going to go to our look section. We're going to use the one that says set size 2%. Okay. Now, don't place it in there yet because we are going to also include another one in there. We are going to go to that variables for this one. Now we are going to be making a variable and we're just going to write the word size. Make sure it is for all spritz and then we are going to select that word size and place it inside. We can not get on motion. If you guys are not able to get on that motion section guys, please make sure that it's in the sprite section, not your backdrop section. Because if you are doing the codes on there, your backdrops of your motion option is not going to be able to work. So we have that button. And what you're going to do for this one, it is going to be um, not touching that create. It's going to be underneath where you're going to have a line in front of it. All right. So guys, once we have that set size to size, we are gonna go back to that control area. We are gonna use that if then option. Now for this, it is going to be touching that set size area. That is going to be where you guys are gonna be able to place that in there. And we're also gonna go to that sensing once you have that. And we're gonna use the button that says key space pressed. Okay, and you're going to place that inside there. Now, guys, when you are doing this, it is important that you guys are understanding why we use these particular buttons. Now, this code is allowing us to know that we are going to be using that space key. Um, when we are pressing that space bar on your computer, your code is going to be able to be activated. Okay, so that is one thing that we need to remember when you are hitting that space key your code is going to be able to be activated as well as if we add other of those pieces. So please make sure you remember that because later on you might be saying, oh, my code is not working. The reason it might not be working is you're not understanding why we're using those particular pieces, okay? So that's one thing to keep in mind. So once we have that, we are gonna go back to your pen option and we're going to use that erase all option and place that in that little space available. All right. So once we have that, I see as, as you guys can see, this is a very long, long code. Okay. But it's still continuing. Once we have that, we are going to go back to our control. You are going to take another if then for this one. Now we're gonna take this and you're gonna place it underneath. And I'm gonna try to make this a little bit smaller so you guys are able to see the better view of it, okay? All right, so once we have that, we are gonna go back to that sensing area. We're gonna use that another key space press, but this time we're just gonna have it as a left arrow. And then you're gonna place that under that in that space. Okay, if you are not able to find that size size, you're gonna go to variables for that. 
Make your variable, write that word size, make sure it's for all spritz, and then you're gonna be able to include that as well, okay? So once we have that key left arrow press, we are gonna go back to that variable section. You are gonna use that change my variable. I'm gonna just put it to the side for a second. I'm gonna place it down to see that word size, and I am gonna change that one to say a negative one. And you're gonna take that and place that in that space. Not a problem. All right, so we have that change size by negative one. We have one more little section for that, and then we have one more big section that we're gonna also include as well in that. So just give me one second. You still can't find your motion, uh-oh. Now, are you, if you're not able to see your motion, guys, look, if I'm on my backdrop, I'm going to show you. If you're seeing this right now, that means that you are in your backdrop option. If you're seeing an option that says stage selected, no motion block, that means that you did it in your stage backdrop, okay? If you are doing it in your spritz section, you are going to be able to see those motions. Last one second. All right. So guys, from there, we're almost done with this one. We only have one more little section from here. I am going to make it a little bit smaller. All right, so there is one little more section on there and then there is one more big part that we have to do. So we're gonna go back to our control section. You are gonna take another if then and you're gonna place that if then again underneath that change. Oh, somebody put a timer. Good. Awesome. Okay. So we have that if then. You also are going to go back to that sensing. We are going to take that key space again, but this time we're going to change it to say right. And you're going to place that in that space. Okay. So guys, once we have that key, I'm just going to stop it for a minute because everything is being highlighted on mine and I don't want it to look that way. I have that key right arrow. There is only one more for that little space that we need. We do need to go back to variables for that. It is going to be that change size. So it's gonna be that change my variable, we'll change it to the word size, and it is gonna be that one. And I'm gonna place that there. Okay, to find that size orange, guys, you are gonna to go to that variable you need to make sure that you are making the word variable. You're gonna write the word size to make a variable. You're gonna make sure it's for all spritz. Then you're gonna press okay. And then you're gonna be able to select that word size. All right, so that was the real big one. Now there is one more big section that we're gonna do on the side. So there is one more. Now for this one, it is going to be when I start as a clone for the first one, so that it's going to be in our control. Now I'm going to place this um, over from one another because it's not going to be attached to the previous one. All right, so once we have that, we are going to go to our motion section for this. You are going to use the one that says point and direction. Okay, don't attach it yet because we are going to use a pick random as well in our operators. So we're going to take that pick random, place it. I'm going to move it over just so you're able to see those numbers. Now for that first number, it is going to be a negative 180. And then it's going to be a positive 180. You're going to take that and you're going to attach that to one another. Okay. So once we have that, that was a pretty easy one. Now for the next one, we are going to go into our look section. We are going to use the one that says set color effect to. Take it, don't attach it yet because we also are going to be using that operators of pick random. We're going to take that. Now the first one is going to be a zero. And the second one is going to be a 200. And you're going to take those two and you're going to place that to one another. So once we have that, we are going to go back to our control. 
you are going to use that repeat until take it and you're going to connect those two to the last one that we just did. Okay. So once we have that repeat until we are going to go to our sensing area. You are going to use that touching edge. So it's going to be touching mouse pointer, click down, but you're going to hit the word edge. Okay. So now that we have that touching edge, you are going to go back to our look section and you're going to use the one that says change color effect by. So it's going to say change color effect by 25. Just get rid of that um, number and just put five. And you're going to take that and you're going to place that in that little space. So it's not too much more to go, guys. You're doing good. I'm perfect. All right. So once we have that, you are going to go to your pen option. Okay. And we're going to use the one that says stamp and you're going to place that underneath that change. So it's going to have that stamp. Now from there, we are going to go back to our motion. You're going to use that move 10 steps and you're going to place that underneath your stamp. Just going to move that aside so you guys can have a better view at it. All right. So once we have that move, you're also going to be in that motion section where we're going to use that turn down. Now I'm going to place that on the side because we also do need that pick random. So we're going to go back to that operators and use that pick random. Now, as you guys can see today, we did use a lot of those operators. That was very important today. We did use that one a lot. Now for this one, it is going to be a negative 20. And it's also going to be a positive 20. You're going to take that and then you're going to attach that underneath that move. And there is only one more, only one more to go on there. Now for that last one, it is going to be this delete this clone, which is in our control. Delete this clone and it's going to be underneath that little space. Now I'm going to hit mine just to see to make sure mine is working. Now you're going to notice that it is going to make that rainbow effect happen. Now remember in your code, if you hit that space bar, it is going to erase everything. And we also did use another option of you're using your mouse pointer and I'm hitting that little mouse pointer to make that rainbow effect happen. You also can use that left arrow and I'm not sure. Now that left arrow is making, let's see if I'm able to clear everything. I'm going to clear it. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to hit this and I'm going to hit my left arrow to see if anything happens. Now when I'm hitting my left arrow, it is not, I didn't see any. Oh yes, it is. Okay. It also makes it stop as well. Now it erases, it stops it with using that left arrow. But when I am using that space bar, it is going to make it go back to the beginning. All right. So guys, at this time, that is the done and completion of this. Um, if there are any questions, I do see some hands raised. So let me see if I can answer those questions. And then, um, okay. Now guys, for the first day of classes on there, I'm going to find exactly where these are going to be recorded. So you guys are able to see any of those. If you were unable to see the first day of the class, what I could do is for the last day of class, if you missed any of these sessions and you want to continue and do those projects, what I could do is on Friday, I can get you um, some extra time that we can get those if you mom has a phone or something, you can screenshot those and then get those codes on there and you can try them. You know, that's something that you could do on your own. Or if we have some time, we maybe can go back to those projects and you can do it and work with those. Okay. It was fun. It was fun. Oh, good. I'm glad I you liked, liked the it. Rainbow one. You like the rainbow one? Did you like the um, ping pong one or you like the rainbow the one the best? Rainbow. The rainbow, good, I'm glad you liked it. We are gonna be doing a one project. I'm not really, I don't have the um, 
PowerPoint right in front of me right now, so I'm not able to tell you, but I know the one project for tomorrow is going to be a pie symbol and we're going to be using a paddle and it's going to be doing a rain effect where it's going to be falling from the top of the screen towards the bottom and you're going to be able to collect it and use points in there. So that is going to be for tomorrow's um, activity. I believe there's only one thing for tomorrow. There may possibly be another small exercise in there, but I do not recall if I remember that being, you know, being um, part of the project. So I am going to do the stop share thing. If there is any questions, guys, please ask at this time before we um, end our today's session. How can we get the recordings? I know everybody's asking about the recordings. Um, I am going to find out exactly sh um, where they are going to be posting these. Most likely my guess would be that they would be putting this on Facebook where you guys are able to go back and see this. I'm not sure exactly when or where they are going to be, but I will definitely find out exactly where you guys are able to get those recordings. Okay, I'm not quite sure exactly where they are. All I know is that they are being recorded, but I'm not quite sure where they are going to be located. So that is something I would definitely find out before the end of these sessions are done, okay? So is there any other questions, guys, that you guys need? Also, I didn't save my project right now, so that is one thing that I'm going to do right now. I'm just going to leave this one as rainbow. I'm going to name this one to be rainbow. Whatever you guys want to do yours. Cool off to you guys is when you are doing these, you can always go back as well. And there is another thing, bye honey. There is another cool option where I want to show you guys just for a second, since we do have a little bit of, I do want to show you some little thing that you guys can do. When you are doing these projects, um, you can hit that C inside option, okay? Now there is a thing where you guys can actually post, um, I wanna try one more time. Okay, now do you guys see how there are unshared projects here? And there is a section where it says share projects. Now if I was to click this project for instance here, okay? Now right now this is an unshared project. So basically if you want other people to play your projects as well, there is a thing that you can have your um, projects being posted where you can also give instructions to people as well. So you can actually have other people playing your projects as well. There is an option where you guys can do that, where you would have to go to your stuff and you would have to make your project public um, so other people can actually play your games as well. So that's another cool thing where you can actually share other projects with other people and they can actually play your projects as well. And then you can see how many people actually went on your projects. Even people can write comments in that. So that's another cool option where you guys can have that as well, that you can create different things and other students can actually play your game as well. I hope you guys had fun for today. Now for tomorrow, again, it's gonna be a big project for us to do. There is going to be drawing, okay? So it's gonna be another drawing thing. So if you like drawing, it's gonna be one of those things again that you're gonna be enjoying tomorrow's project. Good, I like that thumbs up, perfect. So I am going to be ending for today's session. Now I hope you guys had a really great time like I did today, okay? Um, we will be resuming again tomorrow at 12 o'clock. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Bye, everyone.